Today, we journey to the abyss to expose the science behind the mega tsunami. We will uncover a threat far bigger, far faster, and far more hidden than anything you've ever imagined, and explore a scenario where one of these sleeping giants awakens to devour our coastlines without warning. This isn't a new threat, it's a forgotten one written in the scars on our planet. About 8,000 years ago off the coast of Norway, a section of the continental shelf the size of Iceland collapsed into the deep. This event, now called the Storega Slide, triggered a mega tsunami that slammed into Scotland with waves over 80 feet high and washed over the low-lying lands of Northern Europe. It reshaped the coastline and wiped out entire prehistoric settlements. This wasn't a theory, it's a geological fact, though. But we don't have to go back that far. Let's jump to a quiet bay in Alaska on July 9, 1958. An earthquake struck, but the real story was what happened next. The quake dislodged 40 million cubic yards of rock and ice from a mountainside, which plunged into Latuya Bay as a single solid mass. The result wasn't a wave. It was an explosion of water that defied belief. We'll come back to the terrifying details of that event later. For now, just know this. It proved that the rules we thought we understood about Tsunami were completely wrong. To understand why this monster is so different, you need to know two key concepts. First is the displacement wave, which is the engine of a mega tsunami. A normal earthquake tsunami is created by the seafloor pushing the water up. Think of it like pushing up from the bottom of a bathtub. A mega tsunami is created when a massive object like a landslide falls into the water. It's like dropping a bowling ball into the bathtub from a great height. It doesn't just lift the water, it violently displaces it, creating a single colossal wave with far more initial height and energy. The second and more ominous term is flank collapse. This is when the side of a volcanic island, unstable from thousands of years of eruptions, simply lets go. Imagine a chunk of rock, many cubic miles in volume, a mountain range's worth of material, breaking off and sliding into the ocean at hundreds of miles per hour. It is the single largest displacement event possible on Earth, and it's the trigger for the largest tsunamis the planet can produce. Now, let's travel to the Canary Islands, off the coast of Africa, to a volcano named Cumbre Vieja. Imagine a normal summer day on the American East Coast. People are on the beaches in Miami, the boardwalks in New Jersey, the harbors in Boston. Meanwhile, 4,000 miles away, a series of small, insignificant tremors shake the island of La Palma. They're dismissed as normal volcanic activity, but they aren't. Deep inside the volcano, a fracture that has been growing for centuries reaches its breaking point. There is no great explosion, just a deep gut-wrenching vibration as a block of rock, twice the size of Manhattan, detaches from the island and begins to slide into the Atlantic. It hits the water not as a crumble of debris, but as a solid wedge, moving at 200 miles per hour. The ocean surface doesn't ripple, it bulges. A dome of water nearly 3,000 feet high rises up, then collapses under its own weight, sending out a wave in all directions. This is not the wave you see in movies. In the deep ocean, it might only be a few feet high, but it's a massive ridge of energy traveling at the speed of a 747 jet. It crosses the Atlantic in silence. Ships at sea might not even notice it pass. But as it approaches the shallow continental shelf of North America, that hidden energy is forced upwards. In the final 20 minutes, the sea level begins to mysteriously recede from the coast, exposing the ocean floor. Then, on the horizon, it appears. Not a cresting wave, but a dark blue wall that fills the entire view, climbing higher and higher. It's 150 feet high, 200 feet. There are no warnings, no time for evacuation. This isn't a flood. It is a liquid battering ram that strikes the coastline with unimaginable force, surging inland not for minutes, but for nearly an hour, destroying everything for 10 maybe 20 miles from the shore. New York, Boston, Miami, gone. Wiped clean from the map by a silent monster born an ocean away. I know, it sounds like a doomsday movie, 
and many geologists would agree. The mainstream scientific view is that the Cumbre Vieja threat is vastly exaggerated. They argue a collapse would happen in smaller separate chunks, not one giant block. They say the resulting waves would be much, much smaller, a fraction of what this scenario suggests. They tell us to sleep soundly. However, this comfortable certainty ignores the chaotic and unpredictable nature of geology, and it deliberately downplays the evidence of what has happened. While scientists debate computer models, the Earth has already shown us its hand. This brings us back to that quiet bay in Alaska. The irrefutable proof that this is not fantasy comes from Lituya Bay, 1958. When that mountainside collapsed, it created a wave so large it is almost incomprehensible. How do we know? Two fishermen in a boat were caught in it. They rowed their boat up the face of this liquid wall, were carried over the tops of the trees on the far shore, and lived to tell the tale. But the real proof was etched into the mountains themselves. Scientists who arrived later found a clear line where the wave had scoured the land clean. Every tree, all the soil, gone. That line, the high water mark of a single wave, was measured at an altitude of 1,720 feet. Let me put that in perspective. The Empire State Building is 1,454 feet to the tip of its antenna. This wave was nearly 300 feet taller. This isn't a computer simulation. It isn't a theory. It happened in the modern era. It is a documented fact that proves the ocean can produce a monster far beyond our worst nightmares. And this leads to a disturbing question. We know there are countless unstable slopes on the seafloor, including the continental shelf right off the United States East Coast. Governments and corporations are mapping the ocean floor with ever-increasing detail, officially for resource exploration or cable laying. But a compelling theory suggests there's another reason. What if these high-resolution sonar maps have already identified massive, unstable regions that are showing signs of geological stress, the precursors to a submarine landslide? What would a government do with that information? Releasing it would cause an instant collapse of the coastal real estate market, trillions of dollars in value, gone overnight. It would trigger mass panic. Is it possible that the most critical geological data, the data that shows where the next silent monster might be waking up, is classified to protect economic stability? It makes you wonder what they might be seeing in all that data they're not sharing with us. In the end, the threat of a mega tsunami is a lesson in humility. It reminds us that our greatest dangers may not be the loud, obvious ones we prepare for, like hurricanes or earthquakes. The true monster might be the one that is born in the crushing silence of the abyss, traveling unseen, to arrive without warning. It reminds us that for all our technology, we live on the edge of an ocean whose power we are only just beginning to comprehend. So I ask you, do you believe this hidden threat is more dangerous than the ones we see and track every day? And if you live on a coastline, does this possibility change how you see the ocean? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm truly curious to read them. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the planet's hidden power, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and check out our other video, exploring what would happen if a supervolcano erupted, plunging the world into darkness. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.